Hi everybody and welcome back to another video in this Pygame tutorial series. Today we are going to be finalizing the game mechanics. At the moment the game is pretty boring. We only have this enemy which uh, runs across the screen and then we have the player which we control and we can shoot the enemy but besides that there's not a lot we can do. Today we need to make some tweaks to this to make this game a little bit more interesting. So the first things I'm going to improve are the, um, the damage which the bullets do to the enemy. At the moment you can see that the bullets barely damage the enemy which is annoying. And in addition to that we also are going to decrease the height of the jump to make the game a little bit harder. So let me start off by doing these things. And after that, we are going to move in the direction of a tower defense game. Um, yeah, so let me start off and briefly make these changes to our game. So let's go to the class hero. And in the jump motion, we are simply going to decrease the jump to a height of 6. And let me change... Um, this in our variables over here as well. Okay, so this should be the jump height adjusted. So now if I jump, you can see I won't jump as high, but I can still jump over the enemy, but it's uh, it just makes it a little, that little bit harder to, to, to do. We don't want the game to be too easy. And the other thing which I wanted to change was the damage which we do to the enemy. So let me just check where we did that. Oh yeah, over here. So we're going to increase the damage to 5 points for every bullet. So let's just see how that uh, works. So now if we hit the enemy a couple of times, we can actually kill the enemy. Um, but the thing is, you'll notice that when I get the enemy down to no health, he still carries on living. And so we want to make sure that the enemy is deleted after he has no more health. So let's go to the main loop. And in the main loop, we are going to um, make a small adjustment, which is we're going to say that for enemy and en enemies, if the enemy is off screen, um, we want to remove the enemy, which is okay. But we also want to remove the enemy if the enemy has no health. So we're going to write enemy uh, or enemy enemy dot health is equal to zero. So now we should be removing the enemy as well when uh, we kill the enemy. So let me just try and kill one of these goblins again. Uh, it takes quite a while, but you'll see they are deleted and then they respawn a new one. So we are going to now move on to the tower defense mechanism. So let's begin by adding this tower, which I've uh, added to the file tree, into the game. So the way we can import an image is just like we did, like we learned at the beginning of the series. So let me just quickly remind you guys. So I'm going to make a new comment uh, just to make this more orderly tower. We're going to call it tower and then we are going to import um, the image. So tower is going to be the variable name and we are going to pygame.transform.scale um, this first, uh, these first um, commands allow us to scale the image to the size that we want it to have. And in addition to that, we also need to import the image. So we're going to say pygame.image.load. And in this case, the image is called tower.png. So we're going to write tower.png. And the second argument we have to pass in uh, is the um, dimensions of the new tower. So we want the tower to be 200 by 200. So after loading in the image, and um, we need to go ahead and um, draw it in our draw function. So we are going to create another subheading over here. 
um, bear with me. We're going to say um, hashtag draw tower. And we are going to then oh, hold on tower. And we are then going to go on and say win window blit. And we're passing in as an argument the tower, which is the variable that stores the image. And in addition to that, we are also passing in the coordinates of where we want the tower to appear on our screen. Uh, and I've already um, determined the coordinates of where we want the tower to, be, uh, to appear beforehand. So this should be perfect. Yeah, so now we have the tower in the game. Um, but there are still a couple of adjustments we need to make. We need to be losing some sort of point for whenever the goblin runs into the tower. And in addition to that, we of course don't want the goblins to be spawning in our tower. So let's get rid of the goblins that spawn in our tower. Uh, down here in the main loop, uh, we are going to go to the enemy section and we are going to get rid of a couple lines of code over here. We are going to not let enemies spawn from the um, left, uh, hold on, from the left hand side. So let me get rid of this one. And um, remember the left over here gives the direction which the enemy moves in. So don't get confused. This isn't the, uh, uh, the place where the enemy spawns. The place where the enemy spawns is given by the coordinates over here. So just uh, so you know that um, I've deleted the right one over here. Then we also want to delete that. And since we're not using the package random number anymore, we can go ahead and delete the package from the import. All right, so now that we've done that, I think we should um, be all right, let me just quickly check the code if there's any mistakes. Mm, but no, I think the enemies should now all spawn from the right hand side of our screen. Let's check. So the first enemy is spawned from the right. Uh, let's see if that happens again, if we kill it. And then I should, oh uh, yeah, and again. And let's just see, third time lucky. Uh, if this happens again. And yes, as you can see, all the enemies spawn from the right hand side of the screen. So now that we have uh, everything running pretty smoothly, we still need to implement the mechanic that allows us to uh, lose points whenever the enemy hits the castle. And we also want to increase the difficulty uh, the further we are in the game and the longer we survive. So we are going to now say that um, our enemies have a speed to them. So we're just going to write speed over here, speed. And we are going to give this speed a value of three. And this speed is going to be the initial speed of the enemies at the beginning of the game. But we want the speed of the enemy to be increasing whenever we have um, either killed the enemy or it has run into our castle. So down over here in the enemy section, where we're checking the length of the list of enemies, we are going to now say that if the speed, if the speed of the enemy is smaller than or equal to 10, then we want to be increasing increasing the speed of the enemy. Speed plus equals one. And so what I'm basically doing over here is that we only want to increase the speed of the enemy until a certain point, because if we carry on increasing the speed of the enemy indefinitely, then it will just be flying across the screen at one point, and that's gonna be far too fast. So we're gonna have a maximum speed of 10, and we need to pass this speed into the um, enemy object as well. So instead of writing left over here, uh, remember this left was for the direction in which the enemy is walking in, but we don't need enemies 
uh, we don't need to specify that anymore because all our enemies go are going to be walking to the left um, hand side of the screen and coming from the right, walking towards the left. So now instead of the direction, we're going to pass in the speed. And we also need to make the corresponding adjustments to the actual class of the enemy. So if we scroll back up to the enemy class, we can now go ahead and instead of writing direction over here and passing in the direction in which the enemy should walk, we're going to pass in speed. And we can go ahead and even delete uh, this variable and instead we're going to pass in speed is equal to speed and we're going to say in the move uh, function we uh, originally um, had the distinction between the two directions but now we're going to go ahead and delete this distinction uh, with the two if statements and we're simply going to say that self.x is going to be um, equal to the speed. And remember, the speed is adjusted whenever the enemy either, um, whenever the enemy dies. So that can be when we kill it or when it walks into our castle and does damage to us. All right, so that should be the only changes uh, that I have up here. And I'm sure that we are going to get an error the first time we run it um, because we still need to make sure the um, enemy objects are getting the right um, arguments. Yeah, so enemy object has no attribute direction. Line 193, so go to the line 193 and we need to make sure that we delete the um, direction left over here so we don't need this anymore and neither do we need the line below that okay so i think this might already be enough to um, make it work ah yeah perfect so now we have the enemies walking towards us and now we can also go ahead and kill it and yeah, what will happen now is that the enemies are going to become faster and faster every time they die. So this enemy is already a little bit faster, and I mean, ah, now this enemy is even faster. So you'll notice that these enemies are coming at me faster and faster. Uh, I think now it's clear to see that this enemy is moving at a lot faster pace than the first one was. So um, we've managed to make the enemies move towards us faster and faster. Uh, the next thing that we want to do is somehow uh, keep the score and see uh, the, and, and let the enemies deal damage to our tower. So we are going to now go ahead and uh, create um, a variable, a global variable, and call it castle health. So we're going to write castle over here. And we are going to give the castle a health. Oh, we, we call the tower, right? So let's say let's let's keep the name the same. We're gonna write tower over here. And we're gonna write tower underscore health. And we're gonna give our tower three health uh, five health points. So uh, when five of the zombies or five of the enemies walk into our tower that is when we die and then we are going to um, go down to the uh, main loop enemy section and we want to make sure that if the enemy gets to the castle then it takes away a point so we are simply going to say that if the enemy the value of the x coordinate is smaller than 50, which is about where the castle is on our screen. Then we want to first remove, so enemy enemies dot remove enemy. And in addition to that, we also want to decrease the health of our castle because um, cast castle underscore health 
um, minus equals one. Okay, hold on. I think I might have misspelled something. Oh, I would call it tower health. Exactly. So tower health. And we're decreasing the tower health by one um, unit. All right, so now that we're decreasing the um, tower health every time, we uh, also want to count how many enemies we kill. So we're gonna say if enemy dot health is equal to zero, then we want to um, sort of increase the kill count. We're gonna write kills plus equals one, and we also need to uh, declare this variable and we're going to declare it somewhere further up under the um, instance of the enemy class over here so kills is equal to zero initially okay so now we have all these things we also want to well show them on the screen so that is going to be pretty simple we are going to go to the draw game and in the draw game, we are going to make a small change, and that is we are going to first delete the space over here, which is not necessary. And then we are going to go ahead and um, give a text output at the top of the screen. Um, I'm just gonna add it over here. We are going to say, that we're gonna have a castle health, um, castle, hold on, castle, cast, uh, no, tower, again, tower health, no, tower health, and then after we have that written, we want to add in the um, health of our uh, tower, which is tower tower underscore health and finally we also want to add a kill count and since we introduced the variable kills earlier that won't be a problem to do so we're going to write kills and we are going to then um, also output the va value of the kills variable so string and kills and then finally, we need to still make sure that we um, uh, adjust where the text is being printed. So I'm just going to decrease the uh, Y coordinate. And now I think we should have our game pretty much set. So you see at the top, we have the lives. Let me try and kill this enemy. And you'll see that the kill count should go up. I hope I managed to kill him. Ah, uh, no, it was too fast. But you can see that the tower health, it decreased. Um, I think the enemies are still walking a little bit too fast uh, for us to be able to kill them. And the cooldown of our bullet is uh, a bit too long. So you can see I'm already losing a lot of, a lot of health really quick. Um, and remember, we also have a health mechanic that allows us to die ourselves. Uh, as you can see, my character is currently losing health. And uh, you can also see that the tower health uh, can get negative. But for this tutorial, we're gonna leave it at um, exactly the point where we are now, and we're gonna make some final touches in the next video. So if this video helped you out and you enjoyed it, make sure to leave a like. And um, yeah, if you're new, consider subscribing, and um, I'll see you in the next video.